And furthermore, before I click off this video, please know the history of your people. Please make sure that you have extra Bibles in special places that only you know where they are. And know the history of your family and have hard copies in safe places. I mean it, go as far back as you can. Nobody's help. Guys, again and again, we got to talk about it. We're on our own. So, good morning, guys. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Welcome back to the channel. So great to have you here this morning. Probably by the time this gets loaded, it'll be next week. I don't know. You know how that goes. So, we've been doing a lot of work this weekend. We actually took a little time off and we went to Georgia. We took Miss Lou down to Helen and Dahlonega. We had a great time on Saturday. Just a couple of hours, got everything done, had an afternoon off, and got to spend some really good quality family time, as we call it, and we had a great time. Thank you so much for the folks that were so nice to us down there. Miss Lou would get such a big kick when people would come up and talk to me or to James <laughs> and would introduce themselves. Thank you so much. It was great, and I hope to come down there and visit again soon because I love it. I love North Georgia beautiful area. If you've never been to this part of the country, Southeast Tennessee, the very bottom tip of North Carolina, down into North Georgia. Oh, guys, you're, you're missing the boat. I, you know, missing it. So here's the deal. So we've been working on the farm yesterday because this week, now it's starting to rain on me right now, but can you believe it? We're going to be almost 80 degrees on Thursday, not 77. We're going to be like 79 to 80. We do this every year. Uh, this has been going on uh, my entire lifetime, so this is nothing new, okay? This is not something that uh, some crazy person wants to uh, make you believe is a brand new phenomenon. It's not, okay? And then we have all these little winters, all these Appalachian little winters. I have a whole video on the uh, five, de six debatable little winters that we're gonna have. So we're trying to spring prep. Uh, we went ahead and bush hogged down the big garden. We've been burning things uh, for the garden. Uh, you know, getting all that ash. I'm about to do this little flower garden area over here today, hopefully. Just getting, you know, working ahead. Please be working ahead. Don't knock yourself out and take somebody's lunch money, but definitely try to be working ahead. It just makes it that much easier for you in a month from now or two months from now. Just a little bit here and a little bit there, okay? Very, very busy. And I hope that you are being very busy because guys, Every day, it's something new, and every day, if you are awake, you are reminded that you are literally going to have to navigate all on your own. So, I just want to clarify, I had a person or two again ask me, they just couldn't believe that I wasn't going to garden this year. That's not what I said, <laughs> and that's not what we're doing. What we've done for now, and I could change my mind, is we simply uh, bush hogged down. I didn't till it. I'm not going to till it the big garden, and I'm hoping that I get a lot of volunteers. The past couple of years, half of this garden up here has really, truly ran off of volunteers, okay? We've done a tremendous amount of seed saving from it and, and really, really, really a lot of success. What I'm doing is at this, now remember, this is February. <laughs> Mama could change her mind 10 times by the time May 1st hits, okay? You, you guys should know this about us women. Girls, you give me a fist bump. You already know where I'm at. I don't have to explain that to you. you <laughs> so here's the deal. So we went ahead and we bush togged it down in case, uh, and, and I'm gonna see how it does with volunteers. I will know how well it's doing probably by the mid, maybe mid to late April. 
If I choose to plant there at that point, then I can make that decision. My other two gardens are absolutely going to be in full use. And in fact, the, the smaller, no, excuse me, the larger of the two, uh, I'm actually expanding all the way out. I haven't been able to do that since the last two years because we had to leave a big section of the yard, the original garden, open and unused because we had so much work done on our well because they were just going to drive that big truck through. So it was like, why plant anything if they're going to drive over it? And that is exactly what happened. So I'm expanding down here. May give this a temporary rest. We'll see how the volunteers go, but I'm working on an herb garden and blackberries and other things. So no, Patera never said she wasn't going to garden this year and that I'm a hypocrite telling you to prepare and I'm not going to garden. That is not what I didn't say that at all. What I said was, is I may give the big garden a rest, let the volunteers take over while I'm concentrating on lots and lots of other projects. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And what I mean by that is, is there's a whole lot more to being self-sufficient than just planting tomatoes. There's a lot to do. Good morning. How are my babies? Did, did Papa, did Big Yona Bear give you your hay yet? Yes. Now don't give me another boo-boo. Cowboy, I'll get your breakfast, honey. Hi, darling. Hi, Scout. So, I have to be careful how I say all that I'm going to say. Big shock, right? Million dollar question. How abandoned do you feel today? Have you woke up and looked at any news at all? I actually tried to stub my own toe. I was so irritated that I actually turned on the television this morning. I usually don't. And the first thing that I see is that uh, an, a certain individual uh, has decided to not visit his people in a crisis disaster. No, we, it's instead having to have video, uh, video ops and photo ops and all these other things somewhere else all while the dramatic sirens of war are sounding. Oh, how heroic. How brave. Meanwhile, here on the home front, who knows what all's going on, right? What does it matter? Quote, wait, let me do it. What difference does it make? So here's the deal, guys. I probably will speak in a little bit of code and I'm gonna ask questions and hypotheticals all by design on my part. And the bottom line is, is do you feel like you really, does it, what does it matter? Let me ask you a question. You, you don't even have to answer, just think about it. Let's pretend that today you are going to have a major medical procedure done. Could be life or death at some point for you. Ma I mean, a major situation. I don't mean just, you know, a birthday. I mean, you are really truly having something going on uh, and you needed help from close individuals in your life, family, friends, mom, dad, husband, spouse, whoever, just, just, just play with me here. And the individuals that you would think would be there for you the most, even if it's just showing up, let's say you're in the, on the operating table, you come out and you find out that, you know, Billy Bob, Christy, Tammy, and Jim all showed up and were waiting in the uh, waiting room while you were in surgery, they were there. They are there to help you, to support you, whatever it takes. But there was one individual that's most important to you, and they, had, they just chose to go do something else that day. Didn't have to. No particular reason. I don't know. Maybe they were getting paid. But, you know, when it comes to your people and your family and friends and people you're supposed to be taking care of shouldn't you be there at least just just in theory just just being there showing up on the scene assessing the situation talking to the nurses brought you a little dollar 99 rose from the local grocery store you know whatever and you come out of surgery and you find out that that person is not only there so you're disappointed but they're not doing anything to help you they're not gonna have you a, a broccoli casserole ready to help feed you when you get home. 
You know, they're not offering to come check on you when you're sick afterwards and recovering. Heck, they didn't even show up. Didn't send you a car, didn't call, just went. I just want to know, as an individual, how would that make you feel? It would make you feel abandoned, especially if you were young and we were talking about somebody uh, such as, say, I don't know, uh, a parent or maybe a grandparent or did you see that wild hair sticking out there? I swear it's gray now. <laughs> but think about it. I mean, what does, what does that tell you? That tells you there that you don't matter to this individual. You don't matter to this person or these people or uh, whatever. And that is exactly what's going on right now. Doesn't it sound like it? Doesn't it seem like it? Here's the bottom line, folks. Is it possible that we are watching the purposeful collapse of Western civilization? Is it possible that you are watching a purposeful collapse? I don't know. I can't make that as a statement of fact because obviously I don't know it as a statement of fact. I have opinions about it, but I can pose the question. So what do you think? So what does this mean in terms of the bottom line of everything that you need to be doing? Well, first of all, it means you, you got to have a, uh, you, you got to wake up, shake up, and stand around and look around and go, how many examples of this are we going to have to have to where our people are last? How often, how much and how often is this going to have to happen from, I don't know, let, we'll leave our people over here to bold face lying to you potentially about all the things that are going on economically, right? Remember, these are questions. Um, to um, forcing people to do things that they completely morally disagree with to then find out that all of these things weren't exactly what it seemed, was it, is it? Hmm. And now you have a situation to where basically we don't even know how many toxins and poisons and all of the repercussions that we're gonna be dealing with starting yesterday, two weeks ago, a year from now, who knows how long, years. And well, you know what? I'm gonna stand over here on this side of the world and get my picture taken, get my good side. Get my good side, get my Botox side. Hey, this side, wait, wait, no, 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 come over here. This side was jabbed, yeah, this side looks better. A little bit smoother, did you get it, did you get it? What does this tell us as a people? It confirms every dark thought that you've probably ever had. And what it should do is to, like me, is instead of totally infuriating you like it did me, we then have to say, okay, there's only one way to get through this and there is no other answer but God. I'm sorry, that puts you on your knees. It puts me on my knees. I've already been on my knees and I've already hugged my husband and said, what are we gonna do? These decisions you have to make now. I encourage people to be calm, and prepared, and peaceful, and very prayerful right now. But I want you to see what's happening. And I know a lot of you do. I know this audience here. I don't have to explain. I get it. You ask these questions too on a daily basis now. But I'm always in amazement that every time we talk about such things <clears throat> or such things happen, how many more people are brought to the table and go, I didn't know. I hadn't thought about it that way. I didn't see that. I didn't see that report. Yeah, this is what's happening today. So where do we stand? Well, not on the important list. At least that's the way that I feel about it. And it's not because I'm biased in terms of my opinions and my religion and my convictions and my, my politics as far as who I will or who I won't or who I did vote for. 
you don't have to be anything like me. And I don't need to be anything like you to at least sit back and go, wow. So this is happening in a massive region of the United States and all of these things are happening and all of this information is out there and you're where? You better be thinking about these things. Better be asking these questions. Folks, this is about the complete survival and existence of all of us regardless of how you feel, regardless of about in terms of what politics, religion, and whatever. This is about the survival of our country. This is about the survival of your children and your grandbabies, more so than the survival of us. If that does not make the hair on your head stand up right now, there is nothing we can do about it because it's so blatant in front of your face. It's so blatant in front of our face and it's deliberately done because when you are an individual that is made to feel that you don't matter, when your core value doesn't matter, the very fundamental basics don't matter, a lot of people tend to sit down and take it. A lot of people tend to sit in the back row think we're seeing some of that potentially and the question is how much damage is that going to do to everyone with their patriotism with their commitment to community to the commitment of surviving a lot of things to think about these days and you better be thinking about them quick, real quick. Stay busy, keep preparing. Every single day, make it matter. Every single day, even if it's just going out, cleaning up the garden a little bit, if it's going and getting your five cans, if it's you know trying to can a little bit of this or do a little bit of that and planning, do not stop. We do not know the timeline of things in which they are going to happen. I don't care what anybody tells you that this is going to happen here and this is going to collapse there and somebody's going to come down and take you up and you're, you ain't going to be here. You don't know any of that, just like I don't. So the best that you can do, and can please continue to do it, is do not shut up. Be peaceful. But pray and prep. Do the best that you can. And this is not something that you're just going to do today and tomorrow in this season. This is a lifestyle that you are going to have to take on. And furthermore, before I click off this video, please know the history of your people. Please make sure that you have extra Bibles in special places that only you know where they are. And know the history of your family and have hard copies in safe places. I mean it, go as far back as you can, be as detailed as you can, and be as accurate as you can. Your children will depend upon this information. Believe me when I tell you. Like, subscribe, and share. I hope you're doing well. Don't stop, stay busy, and we'll see you on the next video.